I am thrilled today to have Roy calling on the podcast. Roy is a podcasting coach who currently hosts five podcasts, a speaking podcast, an awakening podcast, a meditation podcast, a learn Polish podcast, all four of which have gotten to the top 0.5% of podcasts, and the crypto podcast, which is in the top 1.5%. An entrepreneur since he was a kid, Roy has produced and edited over 1,200 episodes, including over 100 live with top guests. And he's helped people create their podcasts and get into the top 10%, helping them to promote their business or their book. Roy, I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you very much for uh, inviting me and thank you for a nice uh, welcome. I would love for you to share some of your story with our listeners, Roy, particularly around your journey and your development as a leader. How did you get started? I suppose I was always entrepreneurial. So at at nine, I went around washing cars. So that meant calling into houses, do you want your car washed? And then I was delivering leaflets at 11. I was doing newspapers. So I, I the guy would bring all the newspapers to my house and I'd walk around the neighborhood and start selling newspapers. I'd be doing Sunday papers, magazines and everything. And I'd done that up to college. With the money from that, when I was 14, I bought a lawnmower. And I suppose that was my kind of first management because I then used to bring people with me and I'd go, nice. third for you, third for me, and a third towards the lawnmower and, you know, the upkeep of the lawnmower. I was doing, at 18, buying and selling motorbikes. And I studied construction economics and management, then worked about 12 years in Ireland for two companies doing construction economics, like a mechanical engineer with one, mechanical and electrical with another. And basically, that's where I had my most management skill, because I was running projects after about a year into that. And mm. And I was thrown in at the deep end, really, but it just, it kind of worked. Like, you know, you sink or swim, that's the way they kind of do it in the yeah. industry. Yeah. And like the first job was about a million euros. So for a guy in his early 20s, and I remember like the foreman was kind of late 50s and he was answering to me. And I found yeah. that kind of strange because normally it's like you answer to the elders. Right. And then I done another job. And the one thing that I didn't like was public speaking. So when mm. there was meetings, like for that first job, the boss who's come down, that was the only time he come down just for the meetings because I just didn't like it. Mm. When I was running the next one, the next job was about a five million pound project. And I was like, I was going into the meetings, but I remember like I wouldn't sleep the night before. My voice would be breaking. You know, you're like, we were doing jobs for Johnson & Johnson, like they were making disposable contact lenses. So there was the client there, architect, builder. There could be 20 people there. And when it come to me, I was like, even though I was brilliant at my job, I was very good. I was making lots of money. Yeah. I just, my voice, I was like, Mr. Bean, if you know Mr. Bean, that's the way it was. My, <laughs> yeah. my voice was like, Ooh. and I just kind of beat myself up. Like, why am I like this? And I was, even when I was younger, when I was like going uh, to the shop, I'd give my friend the money to go into the shop. When I turned 18, I was a good boy. I didn't drink early. I started, but I waited till I was 18. I wouldn't go up to the bar. I give my friend the money to, to go, you know, so there was like a, a serious shyness there. Yeah. But like later on, very late, unfortunately, but I eventually overcame that, you know, that that shyness. But I suppose prior to kind of that, that is like I started doing another company during while I was working in that thing. I set up a web, a web design company. I met a Polish girl and when I was visiting Poland, I was like, well, properties are cheaper. I'd already bought a few in Ireland and I bought a few properties. And I was like, okay, I, I set up a company for Irish investors to buy Polish property. It was, I wasn't, I was planning kind of just going a bit, you know, one week a, a month kind of thing. And that was picking up and we were getting Irish English and the relationship broke, but it kind of, we said, okay, this is still okay. You're over here. I'm in Ireland and I'm getting all the investors. But then she tried to take all the clients and I would have lost everything. She sent an email. I've set up my own company. And so this is a kind of leadership lesson. Ooh, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah I, I can look after you. And I had got them all. And I was like, I have to come out here because I would lost my own money as well. I released equity on my properties to buy into syndicates. Wow. And she got one out of about 50. You know, it was like because the trust was through me and my relationship was with them. And she kind of missed that point. She thought, oh, because I'm Polish. It's not about kind of the language. It's the skill set that you're you're kind of doing. Yeah. So that that was going well. I was um, getting sites where we buy uh, like Rondon 
and renovate them, renovate apartments. I've renovated over 200. And that's a lovely feeling. When you see something that you think yeah. should be just demolished and you make it beautiful, you know, you're just, you're going, okay. And I love that side of things. You know, you're, you're, the before and after pictures is a great feeling. So yeah. I was doing that. And then I started, I had a commercial with Che, the syndicate. I was building apartments and next the crash happened. And so I was deep oh. into it. And it came across the pond a bit slower. I was doing very well. I'd, uh, I had about 14 people working for me at that stage, you know, because just it was it was working. I kind of had systems in place. And the investors that I got, they were way bigger than me. I mean, I had kind of made my first million before I kind of went out there. And like some of them were worth 20 million, even more. Oh, like wow. they had property all over the world. And next day we're losing stuff. And I was like, what's going on here? Like, so I thought it would come right. And I started putting my own money into, say, a commercial. I put another 150 grand into that going, hey, look, I'll just increase my share if you can't pay me back. Thinking everything would be grand. And as it happened, like they never got it right. Then the rents, because the banks were repossessing everything, started renting class A for like $5 a meter squared. So which was half the oh. price or less that I had. So people just said, hey, drop it or leave. And I thought, OK, I'll go. I'll get somebody else. Couldn't get somebody else. The whole lot came down. It was like a deck of cards. And I, when I was, if I was to finish all the projects, I was looking at being having about five million. And what happened is I was the president of all these companies. And nobody, the accountant or the solicitor, told me in Poland, the president is personally liable. Most countries, it's like, okay, we've lost it. Let's move on. Ooh. So Roy had, Roy had this. So I lost everything. I lost my three houses in Ireland, including my own residential with my belongings. I lost the whole lot. And through that, saw how much corruption was going on. I saw like the bailiffs working with the valuers, that they were halving a price so that what they do is they put a, a flash screen. So they put it up, take a picture of it and take it down. Nobody turns up. So they do the first uh, auction at 75% and the second at 50%. Oh. But when they're valuing it at half its worth, they're basically Ooh. buying a property at about 25%. And thankfully, on one of them, somebody came in that I knew bought it. I lost everything, but I wasn't. That was the end of that one. you know. And it yeah. was just kind of learning different things as I went along. Wow. And... I saw another one. They bribed everybody in the room. Somebody told me, don't go there because they'll be asking, is there somebody from the company there? So I had plants in there. They bribed the people in the room and bought the property. They had whoever they had to buy the property. So they gave them a thousand each, the people that were bidding. Oh, yeah. Good. And like that's going on all over the world. This isn't the Polish thing. This is international. So I was kind of going, a lot of people throwing the towel with this. Like they get so angry. So I went, eventually got cleared the decks, got everything done. I mean, it was a tough time. A few years, it wasn't the case of six months. I'm sorry. No, this was, you know, loads of court. I've had over a hundred court cases. It was like, yeah. <laughs> and so I went to an event in Mexico and it was, what's your quest? And it was that kind of kind of light bulb moment. It's like, ooh, I need a mission in life. My mission is to expose all of this, not to let people to throw in the talk because this relationship's breaking because of this as well. Like there's so many people that are in default. And it's gonna like it looks like there's gonna be another wave of it. So people, you know, they've increased the mortgage, you know, all the energy costs going through the roof. So like there's so much tension because most of the tension happens in money. So I said. This was orchestrated. They intentionally threw money to people that were, you know, if they had the pulse, you got money and then they turned off the tap. So even if you had a 20, even I knew people that had 50% deposit, like there was one, he was a professor in a university. His wife was a solicitor and they couldn't get it. So you knew this was orchestrated, a land grab. They took everything. So at the same event, when I said, I'm going to expose this, I said, I'm going to write about it. It wasn't about the podcast. It was like, I'm going to write about this. There was brilliant speakers there. And it was like at that moment, I said, I have to overcome this shyness, this fear that I talked about earlier. Yeah. Came back and it was Toastmasters Club. So I had to bring people to come with me to go to the Toastmasters because obviously I couldn't go on my own. I like, I know, too shy for that. And I was, okay, this is brilliant. And the two people I brought said, yeah, it's great, but we don't have time to do this. And I was like, I was too shy to go back. So somebody was opening three months later a club. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm joining this. It's a new club. So I joined it. They pounced on me. Do you want to sign? I said, yeah, I'm signing up. I didn't have, I didn't want no excuses or anything. And will you do a speech, a speech next week? Yeah. 
and I just went deep. I went speaking every second I got. I did. Uh, I joined the other club as well. After that, I formed my own club. I became a coach. I entered every competition. So I got into the final of uh, five countries. I did an open TEDx. I did an open mic. I just done everything. I was studying, you know, all the different books on Kennedy. TEDx, all the different things. So went from one stage of what I said earlier. So yeah. just on the business side of things, it's like sometimes we tell ourselves a story. I am this and that's who I am. Mm. The reality is we can change anything we want. If you decide I'm going to do this, you just have to say, what's the steps to do it? So don't mm. ever have a, a belief system that that's the way I am. That's the way I'm born. So you can, like, you've heard my shyness. So if you can go to that, to where you can step, like I spoke at Mind Valley there uh, last year, like in front of a crowd, and it's like, I wasn't nervous. I mean, if you told me that prior to me getting overcoming, so I'd, I'd prefer, no, I'd just run, I'd run back to Poland. Like it was like, no. so, you know, it's it's just a case of don't fear these things. So then after that, there was another um there was another event and it was like, there was a guy doing a workshop on how to start the podcast. I listened to podcasts, but never thought, Hey, what about a podcast? So I said, Oh, this is a good idea, but I didn't want to do the awakening because going back to the thing, I actually wrote the book. I, I didn't release it, but I printed 20 copies and I got it to kind of influential people. I said, Hey, have a look at this. And they all said, this is incredible. And 10 of them said, you'll be whacked if you release this. It was like, yeah. It was like so much information I was given. I think now a lot of the people realize the amount of corruption around the world. But then it's like, you know, it's, they didn't kind of realize it was so bad. And I think I was ahead of the curve with kind of knowledge on things that were going on, especially through my own journey of losing so much things. Yeah. So I said the speaking would be the best one. So that was the very first podcast, the speaking podcast, because I had been in competitions like people all over the world. So that was the first one. The next one was the meditation. So through my journey of losing everything, it's like I the first thing I came across was the six phase meditation podcast. And that was kind of like, you're kind of, what are you grateful for? You know, like, because when, when you lose something, you're thinking of lack, you're thinking of the pain and everything. But if you start thinking, you know, I love when my son cuddles me. I love this. I love, I love having a phone call with my parents. I love, you know, I love going for a walk in the forest. And you just, because when you think of it, then, you, you're you're giving gratitude so then you attract more gratitude and the next one's probably the best one that saved me it was forgiveness so mm -hmm. through all of this like i mean a lot of the investors they just washed their hands and they just walked away and it was like you know they let me have the crane baby <laughs> only there was a lot yeah. of crane babies yeah and, you know and they could have they could have kind of helped and you know because if you've 10 people trying to think how do we get out of this but they just said yeah we lost it and they're gone so I had to have forgiveness there. There was builders as well that had done a few things that they were just, they pretended they had some work done and they didn't, they just, just to get the payments in and um, which led to court cases. And I was like, this was so fraudulent on their side and the banks as well. I, like before I went into one default, I went to the bank and I said, listen, I can split this site up. I've got planning permission for this area. There's a warehouse on this side. There's offices, warehouse here. I'll split it up a grand, grand, grand. And then they sent in the bail straight away. They told, it's like a syndicate they send in. They told everybody, don't pay me. So they basically had to pay them. They stopped paying the electricity, the water and everything. Everything got cut off. So every tenant left. And then they, you know, people that just, you know, living off the street came in, ripped off the copper, ripped off. The... So a property that was perfect and beautiful was destroyed mm -hmm. in a flick of a switch, all orchestrated by the banks, you know. So it was like, <laughs> so the act of forgiveness was like, I need to forgive these people. I don't know their journey. So I, the way I really worked was like some is easy. If it's something small, you can do it. But when this hard, the way I used to, I bring them back to the child. I go, we have unconditional love for a child. We look at a child and we just, you just look at a child and you just, it's just love. You never look at a child and have hatred for a child. You just love. For, and it's like, I bring them all back to the child. And I said, unconditional love. And I said, somebody came in and either abused them or they had an alcoholic parent or something. Somebody during their journey made them who they are. It's mm -hmm. not who they were born. And by doing that, I was able to forgive everybody. Mm -hmm. And then the next is kind of planning your day, planning your year. And it was like, just by, you know, wake up and just have a thought process. What would I like to achieve today? And just by doing that, instead of chugging through life, I was getting way more productive and more focused. And so 
when I was listening to meditations, what happened is the ones I liked, one disappeared and the other became paid. And when I had lost everything, you're watching every penny. So yeah. you're not paying for things like that. And I said, I don't want anyone ever to have that. So I basically know a lot of people that do meditations. So there's loads of meditations. There's interviews that talk about the chakras, mm -hmm. different type of things, different religion, Christian, and everything. Like, I, I don't judge anybody. Everybody, as long as they're good people, whatever their belief system is, that's all good. So I, I kind of bring on all different walks. They talk about what they're known. And some of them, they give me their meditations, maybe one, maybe five different types of meditations. I've got meditations from one minute to two hours because some people say, I don't have time to meditate. You have time for one minute. And there's different times as well. You can close your eyes. You can look at the waves. It's just, I think it's just being present is, is what the main thing. So that was kind of the purpose for that. The Polish one was like... In other words, some people are brilliant with languages. They can learn a language in a few years. My brother has that skill set. You know, he went to Holland, fluent in two years. I was doing Irish from the age of four to 17, and I probably know 100 Irish words. So <laughs> when I was doing Polish, I just thought, I know I'm more a business head like than a, yeah. a language head. So I, but I, obviously, the, the better I was, you know, so I kept, I was doing Rosetta Stone, I was doing yeah. Pims, and I, trying all these different things. And when I was doing all these projects, I, I hired a teacher to come at night, but it was after I was doing all my work and I fell asleep a few times. Can you imagine a teacher sitting next to you and you're just nodding off? <laughs> she, used to, she used to get me to juggle tennis balls and it worked. It was like, because my mind was active. So I'd be going around repeating what she said, but I kind of stopped for a while. Then I did another class and I ended up marrying the the te another teacher, but it, 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 we had a child together, but the relationship didn't work, but we have a good, like, we have a fantastic relationship together. So I said, okay, maybe I'll listen to a podcast, Polish podcast, that will help me. And they were scripted or they were only in Polish. I said, I can't learn like that. So I asked her, hey, can, can we create a podcast? And she agreed. And now it's over 2 million between the audio and the video. It's like it's been wow. number one in a load of countries. I remember one stage, I had a screenshot of it ahead of uh, like Duolingo and the BBC languages and everything. And I was like, this is insane. Like that. And even every, every day, like I get the stats, it's in about 20 countries every day. And wow. And it was just something that was kind of helping me. So what I do is like five to 10 minutes, I put up a picture, like it could be a, a, a dentist, like I done one recently, you know, a filling, what's a filling? How do you do this? How do you extract a tooth and all this? And then like, if you're like natural healthy, just all different things. And it's like five to 10 minutes, we show the pictures. She says it in Polish, I say it in Polish and English. And it's like that way you're learning and people are just, they're, I'm making it easy. And I don't push it. We put a bit of grammar in it, but like most places, like I even moved out when I went to Poland, there's people, they were like in university and they had been, they'd be telling me all oh, English, simple present, simple past, simple future. I said, I have, I don't even understand that. It's just, you need simple present and past. And there's like, it's like when you don't push that, like people then enjoy it. And you know, whether you do a, a song in the language or just do things like watch a movie you like, but have the subtitles, then reverse it that it's in that language, maybe the English, and then eventually in the language. But the way that most people teach a language is they kind of, it's through the memory system. And, you know, not everybody learns that way. So yeah. I think I find that I found a kind of niche and that one, well, but the one mistake that I did make, because like for those that are kind of podcasting or whatever, when I did a first, I never thought it'd be famous. I thought, I thought it'd be that. This is just a kind of thing that you just, for maybe 20 people would listen weekly or something like that. So I took an ordinary picture, just a picture. I set up a tripod and a crappy graphic. And that was the one that's screenshot next to Ada, Duolingo and everything. So eventually I wow. invested. And got a very good one. So I t I encourage people like don't skimp on things like that. Just expect, you know, and it uh, you can get somebody from five or upwork to do things like that cheap yeah. enough or 99 yeah. designs, you know, it's like a hundred bucks or something like that. But like invest if you're doing something, no matter what you're doing, you know, website, try to have a decent picture. It, it makes a huge difference. That's such a good word. Yeah. You know, you, you you coach so many people around podcasting because you see so much potential and power in it. What are, what are some of the things that you suggest to podcasters that they think about? I mean, the the graphic is one big one, right? Making sure that you're investing in, in the, the appearance and what it looks like, because so often people are going to, they're going to, they're going to evaluate before they ever click listen based on what they see. What are some other suggestions or tips that you give? I can give you a lot, the, like on that one, because this is on, if people are writing books as well, they get the graphic and they're looking at it on their big screen. Mm -hmm. They forget that when you're scrolling through your uh, iTunes, it's a tiny little box. So look That's at right. it as a tiny box because they put loads of text. They think, oh, they'll get it. 
Do you think people are going to just click on it because they're curious? You have to grab their attention immediately. So make sure what is grabbing your attention, why is it grabbing your attention, and replicate it. That's what I would say. Like another one is you see there, I have QR codes. Like whether you're speaking, you're on stage, have that at the end. Mm. Because people, like before you needed a special app, people now really understand QR codes and you make it easy. So like I have the QR code for people. And it it has like... Sometimes when you ask people, where can they find you? They give you all these, and I, I'm Instagram, this, I'm Facebook. I have just one and everything goes to that. You make it easy for people. Don't don't kind of go, oh, you need this, you need this. Because yeah, do people have a preference? Definitely. Some people, LinkedIn is my go-to for business. Some people, I just give them all, but on one link. Because you're not then, because you're kind of, people switch off. People yeah. switch off easy. So, if, so that's another one. Like obviously equipment. I mean, I've learned as we went along. But what I tell people is I'm not really that kind of technical and computer. Some people are brilliant at that kind of stuff. You know, I'm not. But what I've done is I've got an Audio Technics uh, 2020 USB. It goes into the, the the PC. Some people have the mixers. They understand how to do the mixers and they really understand that technology. But a lot of people don't and they get that because they say, oh, get the shore, get the road, get this. It looks better. The sound quality is better. The minute something goes wrong, it's an extra connection. They haven't a clue and the amount of times that they will lose for that. So I say, unless you understand it, keep it simple. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's helpful. Delighting. Life, really, no matter what you do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because I mean, no matter what, even if people are on calls and everything like that, because this is the same thing. Like, you know, some people have plenty of money, their business is doing well and they do that. They could actually maybe lose a deal because they don't know what's wrong and they start panicking. And it's like, you can't help them because you're not on that side of the fence. So yeah. Next one that I would do. And I mean, if I look back on some of this stuff, I cringe. It's all a learning curve as I kind of went along. But like I got a better webcam and like I have the ring light there. I have an LED light. So, the, you know, the lighting as well. That is the green screen behind me. And I, that's my book. So that's it. So you can like I know some people, they don't have the green screen, but they 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 put it as if a green screen. The thing with that is I can hold up the glass. It doesn't disappear. Yeah. And just small little things. It just looks, you know, don't like you can get something like that for about 50 bucks. You know, just just do it. And what I have then is because sometimes like there's uh, some platforms you can't have the green screen. So I have a troll. I have a troll that looks like a wall and it's actually it's a white wall. It looks like a real wall. And, you know, that that was only 20 bucks or something like that as well. You can do different things and you can even get different ones. You can get a red, red wall and stuff like that. So just to make sure, pay attention to how it looks. Like, for example, when I look at the speaking and it's the same with this, when I used to start speaking, I would play the recording. So you can do it without listening to it hmm. and just watch it. And you you can and you can do the same with any recording that you're doing. Yeah. Then just listen to the song without looking at it and then, and then do both. And you get different notes because you go, why did I pause so much? Or you pick up on pause fillers or just something that doesn't feel right. Or you're, I mean, I know I use my hands and stuff like that, but it's like, there might be things that you're doing. Like, for example, when I was speaking to someone, said, are you like a twitch? You were pulling your jacket. I didn't know that, but people are pointing out. But So when you're looking at these things and you can ask people, you're just constantly trying to have the best quality. I mean, I'm looking at you, Darren. You've got beautiful books behind you, good lighting. It looks very professional. You know, it's like, Ooh, I like that. You know, and it's like, but obviously you've been on shows as well. Or you've, and not everybody has. So just try to up the game. And if, you know, like if you're watching the budget, do it slowly, but have it in your mind to constantly improve um mm, that's good like analytics like i i look at all my numbers so that's kind of the, the most important thing like everybody they spend time preparing they do the interview even sometimes i've heard of people spending 10 hours to edit i mean i don't do that but i mean wow yeah exactly yeah and it's like but you should spend a lot of time marketing so people just post to facebook and go yay and move on to the next right. one they do not see that and unfortunately like because i i mean you you've mentioned i've done 1200 episodes i look at all people's social media very few people now are getting interactions on on yeah. facebook because they just give sponsor sponsor sponsorship sponsorship so the way it's kind of done is if people interact with the thing so sometimes a picture actually gets more attention and have the episode as a comment 
And it's yeah. just looking at things like that. I create the shorts now as well. So for example, the Polish one, I've created it like a flag, but I've got my link in it where I where people can get me. And yeah. then like a one minute short and then the episode goes underneath that. So depending on where we're posting it. And like I'm seeing that's getting, you know, like anywhere, 500, sometimes 1400 views just on that short alone. Wow. And yeah, and it's all kind of, all these things add up. So I've got like obviously my five podcasts and I've I've got kind of the numbers and the averages. So I'm looking at that and making sure that I'm posting because I, I actually do it in a color system. So everything is in red and then it's yellow. When one episode goes out, I put it in green when two goes up. But I also try to increase, increase everything by 1% and mm-hmm. like compounded. Like if I said to you, can you actually increase your, say, YouTube channel views by 1%? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's doable. Like, so instead of people saying, oh, I want to get 50% increase this year, it's actually more. It's like 167 or something like that percent compounded over the year. Mm. And I, so I look at that and I kind of, okay, when it's half percent, I bit yellow. When it's 1% it's green, then I do purple. And it's like, I try to get as purple as I can. And it's like, I'm seeing it grow. It might seem simple. I might like, why are you bother doing this? Why are you checking? But what happens is when I'm looking at this, I'm looking at, I've got Rumble, BitChute, YouTube for the videos. I see the numbers are down or the averages are down or something. I say, okay, what's going on? Oh, I forgot to post that there. And it's like, it's yeah. it's it, it's just paying attention to the detail allows the numbers to grow. So you kind of say, okay, I want to get X amount of numbers at downloads a day. And so you're watching it to make sure you do that. And then just constantly trying to increase. And I think by doing that, you're actually, without too much effort, your show starts growing and then you go, okay. And like, one of the things like, cause I mean, I've been interviewed on people writing books and stuff like that. Does everyone's asking me like, Oh, how'd you do it? How'd you do it? Everyone wants to know what's the secret sauce. And they all think it's just one thing. And like the first thing I say is it's all about the conversation. First off, it's the most mm-hmm. important thing, unless you've got a decent interview. Yeah. Forget about it. Like, cause yeah, you yeah. can do brilliant marketing and you could beat the guy with, but long-term, the long-term game, put effort into researching, you know, making your notes like, I mean, you've been on shows like, like there's some people that just turn up, they don't even research it. Like, you know, yeah. they like I've been on, I was on one show and the guy like was, he invited me on, he was a speaker. Like he speaks in front of like 10,000 people. Like, and it was like, eh, what are we talking about again? And I I was prepared. So I was yeah. able to say, oh, we were talking about da, 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 da. And it ended up being a good conversation. But it's like, you have to bring your A game. Yeah. And even if you're a guest or you're the host, it's the same thing. And even if it's not podcasting, if it's in business and everything, anytime I'm doing a business deal, I'm making sure I'm doing as much research as I can and I'm prepared. Where some people just turn up and they'll think, I'll wing it. Yeah. If you wing it, you get a winged result. So <laughs> go, <laughs> you know, go intentional with yeah. what you're trying to achieve. And by doing that, then you get a better result. No, right. I love that. I love the intentionality of what you're describing there. And you're so right. It's compounding results thinking the long game. I think too many business owners, too many leaders, too many entrepreneurs are focused on the short-term game. They're focused on what can I get this week? What what, what am I going to receive this week? Not thinking and and realizing that the compounding effect is really what you want to leverage. That's what you want to lean into. And this is true in every part of your life. I'm, I'm curious, you know, you're not the leader that you were a year ago or five years ago. And a year from now or five years from now, you're going to need to up your leadership skills. You're going to need to up your game. How do you do that? How are you intentional about upping your leadership skills so that you can be the leader you need to be a year, two years, three years, five years from now? I'm never content where I am. I'm Mm -hmm. always learning. So, for example, I'm looking at podcasts. I try to look at the better podcasts. I try to learn from them and just seeing what they're doing. I read usually a hundred books a year. So by mm-hmm. reading it's, you know, that's giving you content as well, not just for the interviews you're doing, but, but for yourself, I'm learning from the guests. Like I bring on people, they're talking about things I don't really know. And it's like, I even say to people, don't believe what I say, or, you know, do your research, but it's, yeah. it's opening the door to a possibility of something of your different belief system. And so I'm, I know that I am a different person from where I was. And just going back, because I know a lot of people have a lot of hardships and everything. I met a few people that have kind of similar journeys. You know, they've bad things happen. And nobody's ever kind of going, God, I was desperate. Everybody has come to a better place because of it. Because like, yeah. 
I mean, my plan was build the next four, you know, I built 30 apartments. I wanted to build 400 apartments. I wanted to do this. I wanted to do that. And it was like, now I'm totally present. Like yeah. what I'm doing when I'm with my son, I'm with my son. When I have time scheduled out, it's scheduled out. You know, when people come to me and throw something, sorry, no, this, 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 my time, I've realized that one thing is like time is so precious. So even mm -hmm. like, and it, it was actually one of my clients. He's like really a fickler on time. I'm good on time. I like, I'm not a guy that kind of turns up 10 minutes later or whatever, like, yeah. but he's like, even on shows, you know, because I'm getting them on shows. And it's like some of the podcasters, like five minutes beforehand, like they cancel or they're, you know, they're, they're, they're sending a link later. Or it's just, there's a, and he's like, no, this isn't right. And like yeah. before, sometimes people wouldn't turn up and then they go, oh, I'm sick. Or, and you go, all right, let's reschedule. Oh, let's reschedule. And now I'm like, no, you didn't. You, you knew that you weren't turning up and you're not, you're not telling me. And then you're saying, oh, I was sick. I mean, like my father died in uh, May. Mm -hmm. I, even though it was unexpected and I was like, you know, I was traumatized for me because I was close to my dad. But I wrote to everyone that I had interviews with. So if I can do that during them times, yeah. they can do it, you know. And yeah. I mean, sometimes it's just they're using it as an excuse, you know, and, you know, yeah. just value people's time. Like when you're when you appreciate people's time, they'll and and when you you don't tolerate it. So I think by actually going, do you know something? Because, for example, you know yourself, if I didn't uh -huh. turn up today, you're after yeah. doing your preparation. And if you yeah. say, oh, let's reschedule, you don't just turn up the next day and it's in your head. You have That's to right. go through the notes again. So right. I started saying, I don't like this. It's even yeah. though I was like, ask grand, it's grand. It's not grand. In reality, yeah. it's like you have not respected my time. There's yeah. been a few times that there has been legitimate, you know, things that happen to my guests. And that's that's OK. Things we get curveballs. But when they kind of. You know, when it's not ethical, when they're just trying it on and you know they're trying it on, they just think, oh, I forgot, let's do it again next week. No, it's a case of, eh, sorry, so no, I'm even having a thing like that. You have to pay if you want to come on. And it's like, I even though I've done my research, if, you're, if you've done that to me, you've already wasted my time. And you, you probably know yourself, sometimes they'll do it again. Yeah. And you're like, oh, no. And it's like, at least if you say, hey, you've done this, I put the money into the marketing of the show, but I just want to show, hey, you're you're turning up and everything, and and if they don't, yeah, that's that's okay, not to worry about things there. I think that's really insightful. You know, part of part of leadership is understanding the the power and the value of honoring and respecting other people, and I think that's what you're describing so well there. It's not just the, the team that we lead; it's not just the clients that we serve; it's every interaction. Every every interaction we have in business, personally, in every part of our lives, if we're not expressing honor and respect to that other person by how we treat them, by showing up on time or early, which is one thing I've noticed about you, you're always early, and and I love that. You know, you remind me of something that uh, that my band director used to say in high school: if you're on time, you're late; if you're early, you're on time. And, and I've never forgotten that. And I've noticed that. I mean, but that because that makes you, that makes you memorable. And I, I have a lot of guests that are not that way. And, and so it does make you stand out. It does make you different. And in a market where you're trying to differentiate yourself, you know, both, both for what you do, but also as a person, as a leader, that's a very simple, easy way that everyone listening can take advantage of. I'm I'm curious, right? If we were to go back to when you were 20 years old, you were able to go back in time and tell yourself something based on what you know now. What would you love to go back and tell yourself? I'd give myself a big slap in the head and say, learn how to public speak. <laughs> Simple, easy, and clear. <laughs> that makes that big of a difference. It really does. Because even for those that are kind of working for somebody, it's the people that can speak in public, get the promotions. Yeah. They might usually the people that are good at their jobs, they keep their head down, they just get the work done. And it's the people that are kind of trying to, you know, pretend they're doing something, they can they're cocky and they'll speak in public and they'll get the promotion. And it's like, don't let that happen. You know, if awesome. you've got the skill set, be be a good public speaker. You, know, you you mentioned that you read a hundred books a year which is something that not a lot of people can say. I'm, I'm curious, is there a book that has made a big difference in your journey that you would recommend to leaders that they pick up and put on their to-read list? I, 
it, it's because I often think it as and you know, like sometimes people would ask you that, and I think it's a combination of books that I've read. Like yeah. uh, what really makes you ill was a very good one. It was written by an accountant, and uh, he was an electrician. His wife was a con- they spent ten years doing this, so it's kind of ring fence because people attack you in the kind of health sector. It's over 700 pages. Like, and I even had him on my show and I was like, I said, if he, because the writing is so small, I said, it, it's a wonder you didn't write it on the margin, you know, on the frame. The, <laughs> it was so, but there was so many things in that. And it was like, and it kind of led me down a few rabbit holes. It was like, no. And then when I started researching, there was nothing that I could do wrong. So that was a very good one. I've looked at sovereignty as well. So I kind of look at UCC and sovereignty. So Peter Stone has a good workbook on that. And it's just, it's kind of just ways of how to get out of the system because there's so much trickery and, you know, your signature. Because every time, the, whether it's the police or whoever, because I went through a lot of this, you just, hey, you have to sign this. You sign it thinking nothing of it the power of your signature and it's really your autograph and learning that because, you know, like say in America, they look jaywalking. I did it in Poland as well. And it's like, you just say, who's the injured party? It's a corporation taking money out of your pocket, you know? And it's like, if there's no car coming in Ireland, I, that, that, that's kind of mindset as well. Cause that's one thing that I noticed, like in Ireland, everybody just crosses the right thing in England as well. You, there's nothing common. You cross the road. I never saw people getting knocked down in Ireland. I constantly see it in Poland. Mm. Because the lights change to green and yeah. there's a filter on the road sometimes when they're turning to the right. Yeah. And they don't look. I'm always looking. Mm. And because they're conditioned, you cross yeah. when you see green. So it's like sometimes they're doing damage by the systems that they put in. You know, often people will walk away from an episode like this with one big idea, Roy. If you could define what that big idea is, what do you want people to walk away from this conversation with? I think the most important thing is don't have limiting beliefs. Like I mentioned about my speaking one, there's a few things in my life, you know, and it was like, like I can't meditate kind of thing. You hear a lot of people saying like that. It's just like, take layers off. If you say, I just get angry. Like, you know, like for me, I I'm, I'm the cam type, but even on construction sites, when someone pushes me so on, then I snap. And I was like, I don't like that side of me. You know, and I started reading books on anchor and I overcame that. It's like if you see a flaw in yourself, don't accept it and say, That's who I am. That's that that's a cop out. You just say, Okay, what do I need to do to change mm-hmm. that? And you can change anything. Roy, this has been so helpful. I've learned so much from our conversations, and I know our listeners have as well. And I know many of them are going to want to stay connected with you. What's the best way for them to do that? So there's, as I mentioned earlier, there's the QR code. They could just take yeah. the picture if they're watching the video. So it's bio.link forward slash podcaster. You'll find my five podcasts and you'll find my coaching and everything, all my social media, LinkedIn. I connect with everybody on LinkedIn and feel free to reach out. Let me know that you've listened to it on this show and make sure you give William a five-star review and a comment. If it's on Spotify, because most people say, I don't know how to do it. Just three little dots. You hit the three dots, rate this show, give five star. Go into Apple, just scroll down a bit when you're on the show. Five stars, nice comment, and share with your friends because he's given brilliant value. I've listened to a few shows and it's like, by doing that, you're helping it get up the charts and this gets shared. It, more people will listen. We need more of this where people will get valuable information. Always appreciative when somebody says that, Roy. Thank you. <laughs> if you do leave a, a review, uh, just know that I'm grateful. Uh, because it does help other people to find this show. Roy, you've added a lot of value today. Thank you for your generosity in sharing so much of your journey and what you've learned so far. Thanks for joining me for this episode today. As we wrap up, I'd love for you to do two things. First, subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss an episode. And if you find value here, I'd love it if you would rate it and review it. That really does make a difference in helping other people to discover this podcast. Second, if you don't have a copy of my newest book, Catalytic Leadership, I'd love to put a copy in your hands. If you go to catalyticleadershipbook.com, you can get a copy for free. Just pay the shipping so I can get it to you and we'll get one right out. My goal is to put this into the hands of as many leaders as possible. This book captures principles that I've learned in 20 plus years of coaching leaders in the entrepreneurial space, in business, government, nonprofits, education, and the local church. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn to keep up with what I'm currently learning and thinking about. 
And if you're ready to take a next step with a coach to help you intentionally grow and thrive as a leader, I'd be honored to help you. Just go to catalyticleadership.net to book a call with me. Stay tuned for our next episode next week. Until then, as always, leaders, choose to be catalytic. Thanks for listening to Catalytic Leadership with Dr. William Attaway. Be sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss the next episode. Want more? Go to catalyticleadership.net.